Right, we are off. What are you living in? What are you living in? It could be a scold from boiling right. water. Horrible. Oh, sausage. Right now, there are dogs that need help. You all right, Sean? Yeah, she's having a fit. We suspect she's deaf. And there are heroes who are dedicated to saving them. I don't want to leave any animal in there. You're alive, why are you, aren't you? <laughs> Transforming their lives. I'm going to give them plenty of praise as well. Give them a lad, good boy. She's been born with eyelids that turn inside out and then they start to rub. Finding them forever homes. They love chasing the ball, don't they? In a way, I think he's my guardian angel. Aren't you, mate? My guardian angel in disguise, you are. Giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. To see them now acting like proper puppies is just lovely. They are Ooh. the dog rescuers. I love my job. <laughs> On today's show, we'll see how some amazing dogs survive neglect, recover from serious injury, and even overcome anxiety to get a fresh start in life. And I'll be spending the day with older boy Tyson here at Millbrook Animal Centre in Surrey. He's been waiting to find his new home for over four months now. It's too long, isn't it, boy? Come on. Coming up. It's the little one I'm the most concerned about. Inspector Claire Wilson is determined to get treatment for the tiniest Yorkshire Terrier she's ever seen. I realise this is upsetting but I am going to have to do what's in the best interest of him. I'm going to shut the door, otherwise he'll get stressed watching you, easy. It's an emotional day for Hershey Bowl, as an owner reluctantly signs over her dog. You OK? It's the best decision for him. All right, darling, you'll be fine. Oh, don't get upset. And it's a life-changing rescue for skinny and scared Roxy. It can just show you what a dog can go through and still be a darling. For you today. I'll pass that forth to the officers now and they'll assess the best thing needed for the dog's welfare there. In North Yorkshire, Inspector Claire Wilson is responding to a call from a member of the public. Yeah, that's no problem. Can you just text me the log number? About some dogs that seem to be in a bad way. There's a number of, I think, Yorkshire Terrier dogs. They're heavily matted and also some of them are really underweight. It sounds quite serious, and I think the environment's not going to be very good for them either. So I need to have a look and see what's going on. I've been to lots of thin dog complaints. I would always have to start investigating that. When I'm walking up to a door, I never know what I'm going to find inside. You have to expect the unexpected. from the RSPCA. We've just had a call about um, the dogs and the conditions that they're living in. Claire is denied entry by the owner. Her husband is ill inside and can't be disturbed, but Claire needs to see the dogs. Right, OK. Well, would you be able to bring the dogs to the door then so that I can have a look at them? The owner has five Yorkies altogether and she brings them out to her car to be examined. <laughs> you cute, aren't you? Oh, hello. Hello, darling. <laughs> <laughs> So they've all got a bit of discharge coming from their eyes. Most of the dogs look in reasonable condition, but there's one exception. It's the little one I'm the most concerned about. So this is the one that I'm the most concerned about, because he's got, obviously, quite a lot of discharge coming from his eyes. But that's not Claire's main worry about the dog, ten-year-old Taz. He is very thin. I'm sufficiently concerned about him that I think he needs to go to a vet straight away. And it would help me if I can see what environment they're living in as well. The owner still refuses to let Claire inside the house, but does reveal that the dogs are being kept in one room. Five dogs probably shouldn't be living in one room, so I need to see, you know, what needs to be done in the rest of the house. The really important part of this job, that you have the ability to negotiate with people. Oh, right, OK. I think with every animal, your protective instinct kicks in. Your main aim is to get that dog to a place of safety. 
I realise this is upsetting, but I'm going to have to do what's in the best interest of him. And if you don't give me permission to take him to the vets, then I am going to have to get the police out so that we enforce that. And I think it's got to the stage now that he's so thin that you, you should have done something sooner. The distressed owner eventually consents to let Claire take Taz to the vet. He might be 10, but he's as tiny as a puppy. OK, so if you just sign there... As the environment the dogs were living in is also a potential problem, Claire still needs to check inside the house. You have to take the person's circumstances into account, and I'm always sympathetic as to their circumstances. But we can't just walk away. If the vet considers that an offence has been committed, then if, if you refuse me entry to the house, I'm then going to have to go to the police and get a warrant to come into the house. So the only way that I'm going to be able to tell whether it's suitable or not is for me to come in and have a look. The owner finally agrees to let Claire in. The room the dogs are in isn't ideal, but it doesn't merit removing them. They just live in that room and then you take them out for walks. I'll get Taz off to the vets. I'll give you a ring and let you know what's happening. Thank you. Bye-bye. The woman's in a difficult situation. She's, her husband's very poorly and she's obviously caring for him as well. We take people's circumstances into account, but we've, we've got to make sure that animals go to a vet when, when they need to. Tiny Taz is now off to be examined. The result will determine if he is allowed to return home. Ten-year-old Yorkshire Terrier Taz has just been handed over to Claire Wilson for a vet check. Hello. Hello, little one. Right, should we put this lead on you? I think we'll lift you, you're so tiny. Oh, you're not going to weigh much, are you? Cutie pie. The poor old fella is worryingly thin. It's OK. It's OK. Vet Michaela Wright's job will be to determine if he is suffering and whether or not he should be returned to his owner. Good boy. Let's sit on there. Boop. There we go. Oh, my goodness. I think one I've had a one point, one point something kilo duck. You're a good boy. Titchy Taz weighs just a kilo and a half. He should weigh almost twice as much. There we go. All right, so if we start at the front, we've got quite a lot of discharge from both eyes, which is a bit crusty, and his eyes are quite inflamed. All right, little man. I know. So that one's even more yeah. inflamed, but there's quite a lot of discharge there. Have a look at your teeth, little man. I know. Oh, oh, sweetheart, he's missing quite a few teeth. And what's left, there's a little bit of tartar on, but they're not too bad, are they? Hey, Taz? OK. Yeah, that side's worse. So he's got quite a lot of tartar on there, and there's some gum recession. And on the carnassial tooth, so it's possible that that will need to come out. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. Feeling over here, his lymph nodes are fine, but you can feel that his shoulders are incredibly prominent, um, his scapulae. So we would classify this as a body condition score of one. A body condition score of one out of nine means the poor old chap is emaciated. Moving along his spine itself, the muscles here either side of the spine have got muscle wastage and all the pelvic bones are more prominent than they should be. He's got muscle wastage on his hind legs and less muscle than we'd expect on his front legs as well. This lack of muscle is affecting Taz's stability. He's standing strangely on his back legs, so now he doesn't want to put this right one down, and his kneecap is luxating on this right leg, so the kneecap is slipping on and off it? in the joint, yeah. That's not going to be helping him. What would you do about that? Does he need surgery? Or... I think at the moment we would wait and see how it develops when he's got some weight back on. Right, okay. um, and in an old dog like this, we wouldn't necessarily go for surgery. Yeah. It is likely that he's been caused unnecessary suffering. I also don't think his needs are being met. They're not noticing that he's underweight for whatever reason that is. So whether he's eating enough or whether it's because he's ill. 
Taz will have pain relief for his knee and drops for his sore eyes. He also needs some blood tests to check for any underlying medical conditions that might be causing his emaciation. Right, let's go this way. Hmm? Good boy, this way. Good boy, there's a clever lad. Do, 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 do. OK, give me a break. I know, that was mean, wasn't it? Wasn't that bad, really, was it? He said, yes, it was. It was. Good boy, well done. Come on, come and have a cuddle. I know, it's OK. It's OK, she's going to get you some dinner. She is. What's this? Oh, what's this? He got oh, you're interested, oh, aren't you? Yum, you're very yum. hungry. God, he's very hungry. Well, he's, I would never expect a Yorkie to eat like that, particularly as we've just upset him, you know. He, I would think he's probably very hungry. Aren't you, little man? Yes. <laughs> no, you can't have any more or you'll be sick. As long as his bloods are OK, we should be able to get him back to uh, being a normal, healthy little dog. Hopefully, Taz has a bright future ahead of him. Meanwhile, Claire will be interviewing his owner. I don't think it was deliberate neglect. It's clear that she's got a lot on her plate. Um, she's, she's not in ideal situations her, herself. But we've got to sort out Taz's health problems. I know that he's, he's going to have a full belly and um, obviously not be in any pain tonight, so that's the main thing, as far as I'm concerned. We'll see how tiny Taz is doing later. Taz's owner didn't want to give him up. But in the Midlands, another owner has decided that might be the best option for her pet. For the past few weeks, Inspector Hershey Bowl has been dealing with an owner whose dog Simba has a profound attachment disorder. It's been destructive. You know, she told me uh, yesterday it's actually got a little bit worse now in that it's made a hole apparently in her carpet. And these are all classic signs of what's called separation anxiety. The dog just can't cope with being left on its own. You know, it's a very common problem. And it's one that's very difficult for an owner uh, to deal with. As soon as a dog knows it's on its own, it, it will get distressed. And, you know, I really feel for her, actually. You know, it must be really difficult. Simba's owner, Jennifer, has come to the reluctant conclusion that she'll have to give up her beloved dog. It's a very sad day for her because um, she loves this dog, she doesn't want to have to rehome it, but she understands, you know, that it's the best thing for the dog, and I have a lot of respect for those kind of owners. While some dogs are quite happy to be left alone for short periods, others become upset and agitated when there's no one around. As a result, they may bark, howl, go to the toilet indoors, or chew everything in sight, just like Simba. Hi, Jennifer. You all right? So, God, is this what Simba's done? Yeah. So when did he do this, then? When I was at work. God, look. He's had a good to go at that, hasn't he? Look at that. Yeah, he's chewed the bottom off my nose. So he's actually taken the entire bottom off? That's how anxious he gets. Yeah. Is he chewing and barking? Yeah. Like, the only time he's quiet is when he's actually chewing. And this is just the beginning of the damage. Right, OK, so did he rip up this whole carpet? Yeah, and this is the bathroom door. Oh, God, right, yeah, yeah, all right, got to go at that. He's just, he's just chewed it, he just doesn't stop. He's actually chewed the wall yeah. here as well. He's chewed he? literally everything. When you look at it from this side, actually, he's done a bad, lot of damage, yeah. hasn't he? Right, let's see the little menace then. Oh, Simba, hello, darling. Hello. Oh, Simba! Oh, you're quiet today. Worried Simba, a seven-month-old husky lurcher cross, might be chewing the house, but he's having trouble eating actual food. Do you know, I think the threat, he's dropped, ever so slightly dropped some weight. He has. Yeah, I've he has. That. I've, I've just looked, see. Stress, yeah, it's stress. Yeah, probably. He's not really been eating normally. Yeah. Like, I don't know, it not... seems really agitated. Yeah. <laughs> So probably this behaviour's getting worse yeah. and he's getting more and more anxious, isn't it? I mean, I can put food down for him when I do leave. It'll still be there by the time we get home. Really? So is he waiting for you to come home? Yeah, to as, leave? Soon as, as soon as I come home, he'll eat. Really? As soon okay, as I that's home, interesting. He'll have his water. Like, so he's so anxious that he can't even eat. Eats. You see, that's um, that you know, that, that's obviously a 
you know, quite severe because it's affecting his uh, ability to want to eat anything yeah. as well. And that's what scares me the most because I don't want him... It's like he's not comfortable yeah. till you're around. Yeah. Oh, Simba. A dog can be trained to deal with separation anxiety, but this takes a lot of time, and sadly Jennifer's not able to commit at the moment. Oh, look at your ears, you look like a bat. Simba. When he eats as well, his ears go back. Your ears are huge, aren't they? Oh, well, I think we've made friends at least, eh? We've made friends. Oh, darling. Oh, you are good. Um, I can go and grab a lead. Have you got one? Yeah, I've got a lead. Yeah? yeah? OK. Well, if you, if you want, Jennifer, you can bring him down and yeah, put him in the van. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And, Jennifer, I'm only going to... I'm going to shut the door, Cage, and then I'm just going to do it. Otherwise, he'll get stressed watching you, you see. All right, darling. You good boy. You OK? It's the best decision for him. All right, darling, you'll be fine. Oh, don't get upset. Honestly, I know it's not easy. I promise he'll be OK, OK? He's a, he's a lovely dog. You know, look, you've done wonders with him, actually. You know, he's very sociable. Not a problem in that area at all, is he? You know, so this is going to be a, a sort of a bit of a new start for him and for you. But you've done a, you've done a great job. All right, darling, have a, try and have a good day. Right, thank you. Go make yourself a cup of tea. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Simba's off to the rescue centre, where he'll receive all the help and care he needs. Hopefully, he will soon find an owner who can devote more time to him. Come on, Simba. Just picked up a black female crossbreed type. Five days ago, in Lancashire, the RSPCA attended a complaint about a horribly emaciated and injured dog. Okay. Drowsy. She's got various scars and injuries to her face, her legs, all over. She's in very poor body condition, very thin, emaciated. The tip of her tail is off. You can just see the bone poking out. It was one of the worst cases Inspector Natalie Taylor had ever seen. Today, she's brought the dog, a crossbreed called Roxy, for a checkup. Come here, dear, sweetie. She's got scars all over her. Uh, she had fresh and old injuries. To be honest with you, my first impressions with her that she's been used as a bait dog, where she's been thrown in with other dogs to just basically attack, or she's been kept with other dogs that have been attacking her. Poor Roxy is still in a terrible state. I feel like somebody needs to pay for this. There's no excuse how anyone can think that's OK to do that to a, an animal. It's absolutely disgraceful. Come on. It's been five days since Roxy was first found, so today vet Sean Taylor is checking on her progress. Just sit her on there now, that's all. Uh, 22.7 thereabouts. So she was 21.0 last time and 22.7 today, so... I mean, it's only been since Thursday. It's improving, so yeah. I mean, she's good. still she's still emaciated. You see yeah. the bone prominences and what have you. But she's still got a body condition score now of one out of nine. Okay. Okay. Roxy is so thin, it's hard to believe that a few days ago she was even skinnier. Once they reach a body condition of one out of nine, that indicates that they've got no subcutaneous fat left, but they've also started getting muscle atrophy. Myself and my colleagues pick up a lot of skinny, skinny dogs, skinny animals. I think she's one of the skinniest that I've had. The main thing is she's got appetite and she's putting that on. What's your opinion about all the scars? They are consistent with fight injuries. So, you know, I mean, she's had a tussle with a, another animal somewhere along the lines. I mean, these injuries here, they could be consistent with a bite. Unusual for a bite, but certainly when you get linear scars of that width, they can be the canine teeth. But the one that's, that she's got on her face is a reasonably fresh puncture wound that's filled up with pus, and that's certainly consistent with a bite. We do yeah. need to carry on with, with more antibiotics just because it is still oozing. Luckily for Roxy, tests have ruled out any underlying medical cause for her being so thin. She just needs food. Well, she's put um, 1.7 kilos on in five days. But you should really be looking over a period of probably the next month and she should be somewhere near her, her ideal weight. 
The next step for Roxy is to stay at the kennels. Steady. Where she'll continue to be cared for throughout her recovery. I'm just so glad that we've got her. She's going to get four square meals a day, get this weight on her. When I picked her up, I was so angry. But this is why we come to work. It's just lucky that she's been brought to our attention and that we've been able to intervene and get her the care that she needs. Seems that Natalie has quite a soft spot for our Roxy. She's absolutely adorable. You know, I fall in love with every animal that I pick up. They just give you that unconditional love, you know. I mean, we don't exactly know her background, but still, she's so affectionate, even though she's covered in injuries and she's emaciated. She's so loving. Go on, then. This is the nice part of things, knowing that they're going to be in good hands now and well looked after and loved. We'll catch up with Roxy later and see what effect a bit of TLC has on her. Also coming up, Simba, the anxious husky lurcher cross, proves a tonic for his new owners. Simba's helped me with my anxiety, with my depression, brought me out my shadow a bit like. And tiny Taz gets himself a makeover. The good thing is that this dog will probably be much more comfortable without these teeth. Roxy, the emaciated crossbreed, has been in kennels for the past month, recovering from injuries she is thought to have received while dogfighting. And she's definitely enjoying the love she's been getting from animal care assistant Karen Bahama. This way, Roxy. Good girl. Sit. Sit. Well done. You a clever girl. Considering she has been so starved, she's really gentle. We're taking food off you. Come here. Good girl. It can just show you what a dog can go through and still be a darling. <laughs> she just can't believe how lucky she is. <laughs> can you? She's like, I love this. I love this. Is she good? To fatten her up, she's been on four meals a day. It's the dog, not Karen. And the feeding regime is paying off. So she was, when she came in, she was 21.9. And the scales today say that she's 28.6. Well done. That's an amazing, <laughs> amazing amount of weight. So yeah, it's very good. We're very happy with that. Ideal weight wise, we would like it to be about 31, 32 kilograms. So that's only about two kilograms off being perfect. She's now finished her course of antibiotics and painkillers, so it shouldn't be too long before she can find her forever home. Ready. So when she first came in, she was really timid, obviously very, very thin, lethargic. She didn't really play and interact. Now she's come on, you can see, leaps and bounds. Roxy said, cook it already. Cook it. <laughs> she's showing all signs of being happy and content with the love that she's getting now. Aren't you? Right. I think it's fair to say that she loves people. She loves people, don't you? For a certain inspector, the feeling was definitely mutual. Seems her rescuer, Natalie Taylor, just can't stay away from Roxy. Oh, she looks fantastic. It's always the same when you bring a skinny dog in. You're always shocked. Okay. My last image of her was skin and bone. And see how good she looks now. She literally looks like a different dog. Really does. She's got really nice shiny coat. You know, and she's obviously happy. <laughs> Good girl. Wow. <laughs> I cannot believe the difference. She is absolutely beautiful. Aren't you? <laughs> Sit. 
She's got a great personality. Just shows you how quickly they can come round. Like, even her face looks different. I mean, last time I saw her, a face, the side of her face was very swollen, but she's beautiful. She's a really pretty, nice dog. There's just one hurdle to be clear before Roxy can be rehomed. Has her past experience made her scared of or aggressive with other dogs? We'll find out a bit later. But first, it's time to find out the latest on Taz. The Yorkshire Terrier, who's just been rescued by Claire Wilson, is about to have his painful rotten teeth looked at by vet nurse Jeanette Tungsvig. Hello, sweetie. You're tiny. <laughs> what does it look like in here, then? Shall we get you your pearly whites back? A titchy old chap like Taz needs extra care when it comes to the anaesthetic. Good boy. Well done. Oh, it's all right. All right. Your veins are so <laughs> fragile, sweetie. <laughs> I know, I know. Good boy. This is the problem we have with dogs that are mm. so tiny and so old, is that we have very, very fragile veins. Mm. I think you're falling asleep, oh, though. But they managed to get him safely under. Well done. So now, because he's asleep, we can put a tube in to make sure he can breathe. Doesn't look like he has many teeth left. Now Jeanette can begin her examination of Taz's mouth. There should be about 44 teeth in the mouth. This dog is missing loads on the bottom. She starts by removing the tartar so she can see the damage beneath. Well, the gum should have ended here. So it's all lifted up, and these are actually the roots of the teeth. That would be painful for the dog. If the teeth are causing anybody pain, then those teeth are not worth having, so... There we are. That's half of it. That's the other one. Now we'll just make sure it's nice and smooth. It's a large tooth for a little dog, so the gum needs stitches to help it heal. And then it also decreases the amount of food that the dog traps in there. These are absorbable sutures, so they'll just fall out over the next couple of weeks. But by that time, the mouth would have healed. It's a bit of an extra challenge, stitching on something that's this small. If you brush your dog's teeth every day, or frequently, you can probably decrease the chance of getting to this stage. And long term, would he always need to be on soft food because he's not got many teeth? He so. shouldn't need to, really. Um, the gums are already very firm uh, and they don't chew their food very much. Yeah. They just swallow it, most dogs. Has a lot more teeth on this side as well. This one has to come out because you can see that you can see the, the root and then the one behind is actually loose as well, so we'll take that one out. The good thing is that this dog will probably be much more comfortable without these teeth. Altogether, Taz has six rotten teeth removed. Right. And you look much more presentable, Taz. Oh, you're already waking up. He's going to be a bit confused, so he might do a little bit of singing, because he's not quite sure why he's here. Taz will need to be on soft food for 10 days while his stitches heal. He'll go home with some tablets, antibiotic tablets, and some pain relief as well. So, you're right. I believe he has six teeth left. His bloods show that he had an infection going on, which is most likely due to his bad teeth. Two or three weeks, we'll know if, if he's gaining loads of weight. Hopefully he can continue to, to be a happy little dog. With his nasty gnashes a thing of the past, things are looking up for Taz. Yeah, little man, do you fancy this? And over the next few weeks, with plenty to eat and tons of TLC, he's starting to look like a very different dog. <laughs> Come on, boy. Shall we let you off the lead so you can have a proper run around? Good boy. Oh, you found freedom, hey? <laughs> he's amazingly mobile, especially considering he's got problems with his, with his knees. Come on then, come on. Shall we warm you up a bit, hey? He was quite withdrawn when I picked him up 
and I think he was used to being carried around all the time. Now he seems a lot more like a, a proper dog. He's happy to run around on the ground and just, just seems um, a lot happier. <laughs> He's steadily putting on weight as long as he has regular vet checks and stays on his painkillers for his poorly legs. All I see is a bright future for him now. I think he's gorgeous. <laughs> I'd take him home if I, um, well, I have to set my limit at three, so <laughs> I haven't got a vacancy at the moment. Hopefully it won't be long before the little fella's future is settled. Let's go this way. Come on, see? Animal centres across the country are chock-a-block with dogs of a senior age like Taz, all looking for their forever homes. On average, it takes an older dog three times longer to find a home than a puppy. Back at Millbrook Animal Centre in Surrey, I'm with Joss Iveson and Staffy Tyson. Tell me about Tyson here. Oh, Tyson's 12 years old, so he's one of our little sort of golden oldies. Um, he's been with us about just over four months. Is it harder to rehome an older dog, do you find? Yeah, it is a lot harder, Tyson being 12, because people tend to want the young dogs. Mainly they come for puppies and things like that. They think, oh, it's 12, it's getting on a bit, you know, we've got much life left with it. But they're socialised and yeah. they're house trained. That's the nice bit, you haven't yeah. got all that to worry about. <laughs> that's what we say, that's our selling point. Yeah. It's like he's just a lovely companion for you. He's ready made. Yeah. He's ready to go. His character's there, you know what you're getting. It's not like when you get a young one, you've got to find out what it's going to be like. And he's immensely strong, so if you break down, he'll tow you home. Yeah, exactly, perfect. <laughs> so many assets, so puppies. Many kids. puppies are he rubbish. Wants a puppy. Rubbish. Old-timer Tyson not only has his age to contend with, but his breed as well. Staffy types account for 80% of the dogs in rescue centres. And some people are still a bit nervous about rehoming a Staffy because of their reputation. Yeah, unfortunately, because of the bad press, right. it still sort of has a bit of a stigma to it um, with Staffies. Um, you know, they're very much a family dog, love children, so gentle, loving and loyal. Yeah. So it's just really sort of trying to break that. And this one is socialised, he's house trained. Yeah, ready to go. He's ready to go. You know, yes, he's 12 years old, but look at him. He's look lovely. at you. Look at him. Look at you. So hopefully, you'll find a new home. Somewhere. Yeah, hopefully. We'll find do a special somewhere to appeal. live, Tyson. Yeah, live out the rest of his retirement, won't you, yeah. buddy? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. You're so pretty. Yeah. Earlier, Husky Lurch across Simba was signed over. He was having problems with separation anxiety and his home was getting ruined. He's actually chewed the wall here as well. He's chewed he? literally everything. When you look at it from this side, actually, he's done a lot of damage, hasn't he? He needed to find a new owner who wouldn't leave him home alone and would have time to help him with his separation issues. Fast forward six months, and Lucky Simba's done just that. That's a good boy. With new owners, Susan Jones and her son, Darren. It was lovely at first sight. It was his character. We walked towards his cage, and he come running at us with a little ball. Our eyes met, and that was it. I knew he was the dog we'd like to bring home with us. The first time we brought him home, he was quiet. He was quite shy. Not so shy now. But after... A couple of hours, he settled in and he was running about, trailing the garden. I can't imagine being at home about Simba. It'll be too quiet. Simba's a much happier dog these days, and his anxiety problem has gradually improved too. He's not so bad now. We can leave him for short periods of time, whereas we couldn't leave him at all when we first had him. And nine times out of ten, there is somebody with him. Simba's new family have helped him cope with his separation worries and seems he's had a transformative effect on them too. Darren suffers with anxiety and he didn't want to go out on anything. Good boy. And when we brought him home, he tossed out to us and helped Darren because Darren is now going out and taking the dog, which has given him confidence in meeting other people. Simba's helped help me 
like with my anxiety, with my depression, brought me out my shadow a bit, like going for walks. Let's have a walk, Goodbye. Man. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. One, two, go. Go. Goodbye. Goodbye. My favourite thing about him is his cheeky personality. He just wants to play, constantly play. Yeah. Goodbye. Come on, then. Goodbye. Once a stressed out and lonely boy, now Simba is enjoying being an important part of his new family. Goodbye. He's full of life. I wouldn't part with him for the world. We're very happy to hear it. Coming up. You two are lumps. Bouncy Roxy finds herself a new playmate. They love each other. <laughs> they really do. Five months after she was rescued, crossbreed Roxy is still living in kennels. And she's got a new canine pal to keep her company, as well as animal care assistant Dave Butterfield. We've recently paired her up with another dog called Clay. Obviously, with Roxy's history of where she's come from, we weren't sure how she'd get on with other dogs. But she seems to have found a friend in Clay, and they seem to be doing really well together. Sit. Sit. Good girl. Looks like Roxy has already mastered the art of sitting. But this bouncy girl loves nothing better than a good run around with her new playmate. Good boy, Clay. Good boy. Yeah. OK, come on. There we go. We're going to have a mad five minutes. <laughs> You two are lumps. I just fell over her head. <laughs> they love each other. <laughs> they really do. Just like brother and sister, so they fight and then they play. Started to be able to really relax and just enjoy yourself. Just need someone to adopt her now. It's long overdue. Yeah. Animal care assistant Ellen Dodson reckons she needs a very special owner. Roxy does not know her own size. She's very puppy-headed, but a very big dog. She's huge. People really do need to put the training and the effort into her and be really patient as well. Um, you know, she's come from a bad background, so I'm sure there's something still in there that remembers that, so she needs to make sure that she is loved. Yep. This. Yep. <laughs> I do love how they do that. <laughs> Roxy has made a miraculous recovery from her horrible ordeal. All her wounds have healed really well, so she's only got a few little scars just left on her. She's looking really good. Her weight's all beautiful. Her fur's beautiful. We're really happy with how she is. Yeah. Come on, mister. Good boy. See you later, Rox. We'll as well as giving her clay to buddy around with, the staff have been keeping Roxy stimulated with agility training, but it's still a work in progress. We've tried to get her to do some of the agility stuff, so she's, she's not quite picked up yet. <laughs> but she's getting there, I think. You can do it. Good girl. going to lean on you all the way. One day you'll just jump both. <laughs> Some dogs take to it quite quick. I tend to find sort of staffies, collies, terriers. They're usually straight up and over. And other dogs, maybe more sort of lurcher types, aren't as keen. But she's like an American bull cross lurcher. So American bulls will be happy going over it, so. Come. No. <laughs> she's, she's picking up everything else, it's just certain things. She'd rather find her own little way round. Uh, but she's really good in terms of getting her to come and sit now, so you can sort of call her over. Roxy, come, beep, beep. Sit. Good girl. Roxy's owner has never been traced, but this big softy definitely deserves to find someone to love her and take her home. We're keeping our fingers crossed that it happens soon. So what's the latest on Taz, the skinny Yorkie with the wobbly knees and just six teeth? 
he was signed over to the charity and his owner received an adult written caution. And we're happy to say he very quickly found his forever home with Susan Smith and family and he's got a little sister too, five-year-old Yorkie Poppy. I've had Taz for uh, coming up to four months now. We'd always wanted another dog for Poppy to try and bring her out of our shell because she's quite timid. And it was just pure luck that I happened to look and saw Taz's photograph on the website. Four. High five. Good girl. We've tried teaching him how to play with the toys and asking him to sit, and he just seems a bit clueless. <laughs> sit. Oh. <laughs> he doesn't really understand what we want. But Taz does know exactly what he wants. Treats and cuddles and Poppy's food. You like Poppy's food? <laughs> Always better than your food. Come on, Taz. Good boy, Taz. Well done. Taz definitely has um, a good appetite, but if he gets the chance, he does kind of pinch some of Poppy's fruit throughout the day. Oh, she's going to leave it lying around. So we've just got to keep an eye on him, really, and make sure that he doesn't eat all of her food as well. Come on. Once a worryingly emaciated old fella, this 10-year-old is back to the peak of health, and with the help of his daily painkillers, he certainly doesn't act his age. He's quite lively, and I didn't think he would be for being an older dog. He absolutely loves going for walks. The slightest hint of anybody putting a coat on or anything like that, and he thinks he's going out and he, he comes alive. <laughs> he just really wants to be out all the time. Sisters Charlotte and Hannah now have a dog each to Go walk. Come on, Taz. Taz's knee issue actually improved quite well since he we first got him. The distance we take him out on walks is like gradually increased, so now he can go on longer walks. Come on, Taz. Come on. Taz's new family have given him a fresh start, and he's made their lives better too. I can't imagine a home without Taz. We didn't really think we'd find a dog that Poppy would be comfortable with. She, she settles around him and they cuddle up together, so that's all we ever wanted was something for another dog for her to have a friend. Good on you, Taz. You've got the forever home you deserve. Hello and welcome to the two-part Dog Rescuers special. In the show, we'll see the huge amount of work involved in a big investigation and learn how inspectors work closely with specialist vets and the police to ensure animal welfare laws are enforced. And we've also got Sharpay Anna here, who needed some specialist care of her own. Didn't you? Are you keen to go? She's Coming up. We should have put me uh, rubber gloves on now. Inspector Lindsay Taylor gets down and dirty as she rescues four dogs from a squalid house. I don't want to leave any animal in there. We catch up with Mogwai and Yoda, two abandoned pups who captured our hearts last series. They were basically uh, collapsed when I saw them. Didn't really know if they were going to survive. And thanks to eye surgery, Anna the Sharpay's life is about to change for the better. She's been born with eyelids that turn inside out, and that's constantly painful, constantly irritable. Ugh, all this traffic. It's mid-morning in Lancashire. and Inspector Lindsay Taylor is on her way to a house that's been a concern for a couple of months. There have been reports of several dogs living in filthy conditions. We've been to the property a few times previously and have got no reply. Curtains are always drawn together. Then last week, I received some information and there was a photograph of inside the property. The conditions were appalling. If there are animals that are in that property living in them conditions, we need to get in there pretty quickly. Based on this information, the police have issued a warrant for entry to the house. Lindsay also has the backup of vet Sean Taylor, who will assess the conditions and the dogs. Hi, Sean. Right? Yes, are you? Yeah, not bad, thanks. Good. Uh, thanks for coming. Okay. I think we might need suits possibly for this job. Okay. Um, so if we get kitted up and wait for the police to come, see you in there. Yeah. And then. Uh, okay. See what we find. Yeah. 
I think when I've got to the point where I'm putting a protective suit on, I already know it's going to be quite bad. Not something you look forward to, but then at the same time you're eager to get in there because you want to get the, the dogs out of there as quickly as possible. So you do what you need to do. As well as looking out for the dogs, Lindsay and Sean need to be prepared to gather evidence to help build a case. I'm there to ensure that the dogs that are within that environment um, have uh, their needs met and that uh, none of them are suffering unnecessarily. Police, they have a warrant um, to gain entry, but we're going to just try and knock on the door, see if he answers. Till the police open that door for us and say, right, um, you're in, we, we just never know what to expect. Can't really see in the property. Okay. Curtains are closed and so on. They clearly don't want anybody looking in. But they don't need to be inside to know there's something grim waiting for them. We've got a trail of faeces coming out from the front door to his car. There already is quite a, a smell around the property. It's been a few days since Lindsay was last here and got no reply. This time, the police are with her to help her gain access. Are you going to answer the door? If you don't answer the, if you don't answer the door, we'll come and send you the occupant eventually opens the door. You're not coming in. Let's go inside. Familiar smell is starting to ooze. <laughs> I can smell it already. I'm telling you now, they're coming in. Despite protests from the occupant, Sean and Lindsay make their way inside, supported by the police. And it looks as bad as it smells. <sighs> They've been told to expect three or four dogs, but at first sight, there's just one. Hello, sweetie. Hello, sweetie. We should have put me uh, rubber gloves on now. I'm just going to look upstairs, Sean, just see if that barking's coming from upstairs. And sure enough, there are more dogs on the first floor. What have we got up here? One in there, Lynn's. One in there. And one in that one. It seems the three dogs are being kept in separate rooms. So this, do we know what room this is? Is this just a bedroom? Front bedroom. Front bedroom, right, sweetie. Let's just take a look. See who we've got in there. Don't come out, sweetie. Each dog has been shut in alone. The, bedroom. the back bedroom. Yeah. Right, it's a quick picture, sweetie, so we know who's in where. When I go into an address, first thing I want to do is just quickly go around and just see what the situation is for each dog. Bruce, come on. We've got to do it properly, um, and that means collecting the evidence and collecting it in the right way as well. So it wasn't done right, and the courts then awarded the dogs back to that owner that had put them in such a situation to start with. Yeah, it'd be pretty heartbreaking, really. Yeah, right, that's the darker one in the bathroom. Are you all right, sweeties? We're going to get you out soon. I promise. Oh. The dogs have been using the floor as a toilet and the stench is overpowering. Oh. <coughs> in an environment which is in intensely unhygienic, we get a lot of ammonia. And the ammonia very, very quickly, and I'm talking now within probably two to three minutes of being in such an environment, starts to irritate your throat and almost a burning sensation within the nose and the eyes. And that is something, again, that's influenced the animals too. Wow. Make my eyes water. <laughs> and the dog is locked in there and it can't escape that. That's something from a horror film, isn't it? Oh. The silence of the lambs. Oh, God. I think I need some fresh air. And she's not the only one. I can only do stints of about 10 minutes in there. Yeah. You need to come out and just clear your lungs back out of all the crap. Yeah. I'm probably quite close to being sick in there then. Um, just, yeah, I'm not, I'm not feeling my best at the moment. Just a few minutes inside has made Lindsay feel ill, so how unbearable must it be for those poor dogs? The floor is actually a good three to four inches of, of moulded dog faeces. The only room that's not actually got anything in it is the room that he's living in himself, but the, the rooms that the dogs are in are absolutely shocking. 
the decision on whether the dogs need to be removed is an easy one. Oh, we're taking these today, without a doubt. I don't want to leave any animal in there. With conditions this hazardous and unhygienic, getting the dogs out is now a matter of urgency. In Lancashire, Inspector Lindsay Taylor is about to rescue four dogs being kept in squalid conditions. We haven't managed to check the dogs yet. We've just looked at the environment. It's one of the worst that I've been in. It's a complete mess in there. The occupant of the house is refusing to cooperate. What I need to do is ask you some questions under caution. We are going to be removing the dogs today. How do they get on with each other? I'm not doing nothing. OK, it's just, it's just us to know... Do, do we need to keep them separate? No OK. Start taking them out one by one. The occupant may not be offering up any information, but the police have made a discovery. Right. Apparently, two of the dogs don't belong to the occupant, but to someone else. They, they, they come yeah, in. I've, I've it's, that's we're something we're going to have to sort out. Yeah. If she is the owner of some of these animals, then I have to go and interview her anyway. So, just the fact that she's allowed them to be in this environment is an, an offence. Whoever he belongs to, the first dog to be removed is the one that was wandering around downstairs, a large bull breed type called Bruce. Right, I'm going to get a lead for you, sweetie. Goodbye, Bruce. Bruce must be happy to be out in the fresh air. Goodbye, Bruce. Vet Sean Taylor will be giving each dog a quick assessment for any urgent medical issues. Bruce. Have you checked his eyes as well? Yeah, Looks to have um, a bit of conjunctivitis, perhaps. It's a historic thing, it's not recent. There was nothing obvious. No, brilliant, thank you. Good boy, Bruce. Right, pop you in. Oh, good boy. You want me to lead on him? <laughs> he's not too bad. Um, he's dirty, but I'm not surprised from the state of the property that he's come from. Hello. Hello, sweetie. Hello, come, come in. Next to come out is Beethoven, the dog that was shut in the front bedroom. Hello, we're going to get you out. Eh? This little terrier cross looks a lot more worried than Bruce. There we go, let's just slide this. You're all right, we're going to get you out. Come on, guys. Oh, Ooh, that room made my eyes water did that one. A bit scary, isn't it? It's all right. yeah. Oh dear. At least we got you out of there. Nervous Beethoven's coat looks rather the worse for wear. Body condition wise, it seems okay. Again, very dirty and smelly. Um, a flea allergy going on, skin condition as well. Oh, Bruce. Hey. Oh dear. Come on, your turn. There we go in there. Oh, good boy. With two dogs safe, it's time to get the next one. And animal collection officer John Greaves has arrived to help. The third dog, Terrier Cross Susie, was shut in a bedroom, if you can call it that. The poor thing has literally been living in her own waste. Just get a couple of pictures. <laughs> Oh, good girl. Susie's coat also doesn't look too healthy. Oh, you don't need to be nervous now. I'll get you somewhere better. She's quite timid. Um, the second dog that we got out was, was very timid as well. And I would imagine they're not, just not being socialised. With Susie safe in the van, there's just one dog left. Terrier Cross Magic. Right, good girl, let's take you through here. But it seems the stress is all too much for her. Oh, 
Sure, right, sure. Yeah, it's having a fit. Just keep your fingers away. With a fit or convulsion induced by stress, the only thing to do is wait until it passes. Well, that's it. You don't know. Does she need mm. what? Just get her in, yeah, just get her segment straight in. Some of it can just be information overload, really, that if she has been isolated in there, rather she just went, because with a fit in, she could potentially start again. Poor magic will need to be carefully monitored at the animal centre. If the dog shows any further signs of fitting, then obviously we need to uh, consider whether uh, we should be getting that uh, dog on more long-term treatment. We'll catch up with her and the other dogs soon. As you've seen, it's not always an easy job for the inspectors. But last year, over 8,000 dogs were rescued and given a second chance at life. Playing a key role in this process are the animal centres across England and Wales, where many of the rescued dogs live and are cared for until they find their new homes. Hull Animal Centre is just one of them. Dogs from all sorts of different backgrounds are taken in by assistant manager Amanda Nightingale and her team. We get three to four dogs in a month, um, depending on rehoming. But we've been rehoming pretty successfully this year. I think we've rehomed 46 dogs so far this year. So we're not doing too bad. Good, good. That's it. There we go. Come on, then. Come on, bird. So when they first come in, they're all given a vet check. They're then all fleed, wormed, weird as well, so we can monitor the weight. Good girl. That's it. If it's not microchips, we microchip on site. Here we go, good boy. Those things are usually done within the first 24 hours of a dog coming on site, so we're giving it the best start we can, really. You are such a good girl. You are. You're beautiful. While they're here, the dogs are given plenty of attention and stimulation to help them get ready for their new homes. Oh, yeah, if you're not sweating, you're not doing it right. Here we go. This is our back paddock. It's a great space for us to be able to exercise the dogs. They can run around. We've got some agility equipment, so we can have a practice with that and to build their confidence. Come on, Bonnie. Come on. Good girl. This way. Yay, good girl. That was so good. He's a good dog. I try to get them all walking very nice on a lead, which is really important. Nobody wants a dog pulling them around just makes them a bit more appealing when somebody's looking for them for a home. It's nice when the public come in with an idea of what they want in their head and go away with something totally different. <laughs> Jessie. Hello, Jessie. <laughs> she she tries to take everything, but... <laughs> we had a gentleman come in for a small dog and went home with the dog to Bordeaux, so it always works. <laughs> Inspector David Milborough has arrived with a lively three-year-old Cocker Spaniel who has just been signed over. This is Marley, a really nice, friendly dog. The, the family just weren't able to cope. This little guy needs loads more exercise than he's been getting. And we can find the right home. They're a really active family that are going to take him for lots of walks. Um, so, yeah, definitely the best thing for him, really. Shaky, shaky. Before Marley gets an assessment and vet check, it's playtime. A chance to burn off some of that energy. Ooh. Ooh. Just talking to the staff here, and we all reckon that by midday tomorrow there'll be people asking about him. Just the kind of dog that is unusual to get in these, these rescue homes, so um, I think he'll be rehomed really, really quickly. He seems like a really nice dog. He does need to, need to learn a few manners. He needs to learn how to walk on leave properly and that kind of thing, but that's easily done with a few treats, really. So, yeah, he's a smashing little dog. Yeah! <laughs> He's a good boy. He's a good lad. Let's hope frisky little Marley gets taken home soon. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? <laughs> we'll be back to check on Marley later. Now, from one perky pooch, to two nervous little pups. In our last series, Inspector Simon Evans rescued two very distinctive and adorable ugly puplings, Yoda and Mogwai. The six-month-old French bulldogs were dumped in a park in South Wales. What little coat they had was in a dreadful condition. They were so lifeless. They were taken to Newport Animal Centre, where they were nursed back to health. 
They were basically uh, collapsed when I saw them. Didn't really know if they were going to survive. Four months on, and both Yoda and Mogwai have found new homes. Smile. <laughs> Richard and Wendy Lloyd Roberts fell for Mogwai after just one look at his picture. And you can see why. When we first saw Mogwai online, it was, we, we thought he was very cute, didn't we? Straight away. He said, can you come down? So we literally just threw uh, coats in the car and shot down there with our son. As soon as we saw him, it was like, oh, man, this is the sweetest little man ever. He was jumping up to me, got on my lap. Everything seemed to fall into place. And Mogwai's settled in. He likes his soft toys. He's got his, uh, his little monster uh, donut. But that doesn't taste as good as it looks. Thanks to regular meals, this little chap is now up to a healthy weight. And medicated baths have cured his skin problem. But there's one thing that's not going quite so well. Right, sit. 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 Nope, he's not going to, is he? Come on, sit. Sit. I thought, I'm not going to sit. Sit. Just give me it. It's either here or I give up at this point. I'll sit if you give me it. Mugs, sit. Sit. Oh, your hard work. Sit. Good boy. As I say, it is work in progress with him. Come on, Mugs. Mogwai enjoys his rest with his mum. Keeps me company all day. He normally has one ear up and one ear down. But I've been massaging his ear that's normally down. And when he wants to, he can keep it up now. But when he's not thinking about it, he'll, uh, it'll just flop back down. So Mogwai's happy. But what about brother Yoda? Today, the two dogs are going to be reunited for the first time since they were rehomed. But will they remember each other? Who's this? Who is it? Oh, isn't it lovely? It's so... Aren't they so different? They are. Yoda's new mum, Doreen Bunch, has come along with her daughter. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. Aren't they... I can't believe how different they are, though. But something about those ears looks very familiar. I mean, he's so light as... He's so dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's getting a bit of a Dear bully. <laughs> Look at that. Typical brothers. He's quicker than you, <laughs> But they both seem very excited to see each other again. They're just amazing. I'm sure you'll agree, both siblings look superb and their lives have definitely changed for the better. It's nice to see that Yoda's found a loving family and uh, they're both going to have a happy ending. It was nice to see they both had one ear up and one ear down. Yeah. It was those ears that did it for Doreen too. She fell in love with Yoda at the animal centre in Newport. He was looking through the bars and I was looking in the bars and I thought, oh, he's beautiful. He's lovely as a delight, aren't you? They're both found forever homes. They're, they're both settled, they're both happy, and you couldn't ask for anything better, could you? No longer ugly puplings. It's a brilliant outcome for these two beautiful bulldogs. Coming up, Anna the Sharpay goes under the knife to give her a pain-free future. I hope she's a lot happier after this. It's been really sore for her. And things are looking up for the dogs rescued from a squalid house. He's lovely. He's lovely. Yeah, you're going to enjoy your stay here. <laughs> Lindsay Taylor has just rescued four dogs from a filthy and hazardous house and is on her way to RSPCA Halifax. 
There's a couple of issues, but they seem reasonably healthy. So happy that those dogs won't be spending another night in conditions like that that are just so awful. Two of the dogs have already been rushed to the centre, including Magic, who is the biggest worry as she had a fit outside the house. Rather she just went, because with a fit in, she could potentially start again. Dog trainer and behaviour advisor Mike Cuthbert has been monitoring her. Right then, you was my favourite, wasn't you? She's not showing any signs of the seizure now, so but we'll, we'll have staff that will come down and check on that. Yeah. Magic was extremely stressed, but she looks a lot happier now. She was a little bit nervous coming in, although then when we did get underneath, her skin isn't quite as good as it looks. Susie, who was found shut in a bedroom, was also anxious. All right, sweetheart. She'll need lots of love and attention, bless her. Good girl. Been very good. Hopefully, a new lease of life now. Hello. With Susie and Magic settling in, Lindsay can deal with the other two dogs from the property. Good boy. Friendly lad Bruce was wandering around in the dirty and cluttered downstairs rooms. One. Good boy, up here. So this is Bruce. He seems to be the most confident. He's got quite a nick on his ear, actually. There's a good chance that that could be a nick from another dog. I mean, the nice thing is that he's, obviously his temperament's wonderful uh, because we're all strange to him um, and there's quite a few of us in the room. He's lovely. He's lovely. Yeah, you're going to enjoy your stay here. Bring the next one. Yeah. You ready? The second dog, Beethoven, is still wary. Yay, sweet, it's your turn. It's your turn, let's get you out. Hey, don't worry, sweetie. You're gonna come with me. Oh, his tail's tucked fully under. You don't need to worry. It's okay, mate. You're in safe hands now. <sighs> the dog's obviously really scared. See, he's lip licking a lot, which is a sign to us that he's very stressed. He's also shaking, lowered his body. So all the signs that he's obviously a very distressed dog at this moment in time. To add to his problems, his coat doesn't look good at all. Oh, that's bad skin. I bet that's really itchy. We'd suspect that this possibly is a flea allergy. Just like the others, Beethoven is given flea drops to help relieve the problem. This will kill any fleas that are on the dog. Right, shall we pop you back down? A bit of TLC seems to have already worked wonders for him. I mean, even his, his confidence has come round just in these few minutes, hasn't it? Yeah, he's totally different now. Good boy. Hello. And those treats are helping too. Oh, you do like these, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing but the best Good here. Good boy. Is that nice? Are you enjoying he's that? He's enjoying that, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The skin was not good on all these dogs. They'll all end up on treatment, particularly for the next few weeks till we can get them up to health again, really. Now, Lindsay needs to make some inquiries into who actually owns these dogs. Bruce and Susie are both registered to someone else, and the occupant has refused to sign over his two dogs, Beethoven and Magic. In the meantime, Lindsay's just pleased that they've all been treated and they're out of that house. They've got a nice, clean environment to be in. They've got clean, fresh water in a clean bowl. I can go home now happy knowing that these dogs have been well looked after now. We'll catch up on their progress later. Dogs come in all shapes, sizes and breeds. But for some pedigree pooches, the distinctive look they've got through selective breeding can cause health problems. In breeds with large heads, like bulldogs, the mothers can struggle to give birth naturally, so may need a caesarean section to deliver their pups. Dog de Bordeaux can suffer with hip dysplasia and arthritis. And those with wrinkled faces, like Sharpays, are at higher risk of infections and inflammation of the skin. Sharpays are also prone to another problem, an abnormal rolling inwards of the eyelids, which causes the lashes to rub on the globe of the eye, or eyeball. This condition, called entropion, is very painful. Breeding dogs with less excessive skin helps reduce its severity, but for those already affected, the best option is surgery. Come on. 
Today, Sarah Sanderson, who runs a Sharpe charity in Yorkshire, has brought rescue dog Anna to have her much-needed op. When Anna was handed over to the charity by her owner eight months ago, she was underweight and had inflamed skin. But thanks to the right care, now her only problem is her eyes. Hello. Hi, Keith. The procedure will be carried out by vet Keith Leonard. Come on, then. Up we go. Three, two, one. Up. There we go. Hello, Anna, darling. Let me come round and have a look and see what she has. You can see it's discharged as well, isn't it? Yeah. And she's blinking a lot, isn't she? She's been born with eyelids that turn inside out and then they start to rub on the, on the cornea. And that's constantly painful, constantly irritable. With Anna today, we're just going to try straightforward surgery around the eyes to see if we can correct that. Unfortunately, if this problem is left untreated, it can lead to perforation. So worst case scenario, the globe can actually burst through an ulcer but it also can just lead to a complete overgrowth of the eye with uh, connective tissue. Blindness is a very common sequel to this. So we have to treat it when we see it. Anna is prepped for the procedure. Right, thank you. So what's happening is that the eyelid's rolling in. The eyelid margin, if I roll that out, should be out there, really. There's the edge of the eyelid. And what happens with all the extra skin is it just rolls in and rubs against the eye. We want to turn that eyelid margin out. So what I'm going to do in this situation is I'm going to remove some skin from below and from above, and that will tension from here to pull this eyelid out. OK. Now Anna's anaesthetised, Keith is ready to start the delicate operation. So I'm going to take a piece of skin out from here and a little bit from here. He starts with the top eyelid. I'd look away now if you're squeamish. I use my finger quite happily under there. The hardest part of this is deciding how much to take off. There isn't a measurement that you can read in a book to say this is how much, and that's where this operation can need repeating at times. OK, that's my first one. So you can see we've taken a section of skin out. And when I sew this up, it should take that up there and roll this eyelid out more. Keith sews up the lid with dissolvable stitches. So an upper lid done, and you can start to see now the eyelid is turning out. Now I'm going to do the lower lid next. To get this corrected, and you really do need to have to take quite a bit of skin away. After stitches in the bottom lid, Anna's left eye is done. Keith now has to do the same procedure on her right eye. Ooh. This is such a big problem now. There are some vets who are actually doing this procedure on Sharpays every day. They maybe do two adults and a couple of litters of puppies every day. In young puppies that are growing, we stitch the eyelids open with the tacking procedure. And when they're fully grown, like Anna, we can then do more permanent entropian surgery. So this is the last one now. OK. Sew that up. Right. And that's the last stitch. That's it done. And now for the big reveal. Anna's brand new healthier eyelids. So much better. I hope she's a lot happier after this. Um, I think it's been really frustrating for her and sore. In the recovery room, Anna is fitted with a buster collar. She'll need to wear it for 10 days while her eyes heal. It's so different, isn't it? 
does, yeah. Hello, oh, how do you see those pretty eyes? Once the collar comes off, it just takes a little bit of time for the swelling, inflammation and scarring to settle down. But within two weeks, she should be a lot more comfortable. So how has Anna's outlook on life changed? Well, here to tell us are her new owners, Justin and Danny Marston. How's she getting on with her eyes now, then? Absolutely fine. Seem to be yeah. normal. Yeah. Can you see? You can see, can't you? Yeah, she can. What do they do? Do they have an eye test, like a big board with letters on? Yeah, of course they do. D-O-G-C-A-T. <laughs> Are you joining us at the table? Yeah. yeah. Like I say, eye test working. Oh, yes, you've seen her mate from half a mile away. There's nothing wrong with your eyesight at all. <laughs> no. So how did you settle upon Anna? What was it that made you go for her? I just took one look at her and I thought, she's just absolutely gorgeous. So I just had to have her. Yeah. But now, a uh, real character's coming out now, so she's settling in absolutely it's good fine. fun to have her around. She is, yeah, she's quite funny. And how do you <laughs> feel about giving Anna a fresh start? Uh, just wonderful. She's just so loving. She's got her own personality. You know, she's just perfect for us. Oh, well, she's gorgeous, isn't she? Now for some good news on another lively pooch. Come on, Marley. Earlier we met boisterous cocker spaniel Marley. Shaky, shaky. He was signed over by his owner, who couldn't cope with him, and taken to Hull Animal Centre. We all reckon that by midday tomorrow there'll be people asking about him. Just the kind of dog that is unusual to get in these, these rescue homes, so um, I think he'll be rehomed really, really quickly. Yeah, yo. And sure enough, just five weeks later, Live Wire Marley has found his forever home. He's enjoying his new life with Ian Goldie and family, including nephew Josh. We saw him on the RSPCA site and we fell in love with him straight away. And we thought, well, that must be the dog for us. Settled in really well. Good dog. His character is really good. He's, he's brilliant. He's just so relaxed. He's so chilled out. Chilled out? Has hyperactive Marley actually been tamed? Must be all that exercise he's getting now. He loves his walks. Now he's been walking and that. Let's have a lot of fun. Like, like let him go and he's, he takes off like, like a madman. He goes, <laughs> really crazy. He gets so excited, his tail goes like an helicopter. Yep, that's the Marley we know and love. There he goes. There, there he goes. goes. There's the helicopter. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? As well as his regular walks, Marley also likes to take a dip, but so far, just in the shallow end. You don't like going out with dip? Getting further in, don't he? Getting braver and braver going in. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. oh. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't want to go that deep, he says. Marley also has a new playmate, Hello, Spaniel Mac. Mac belongs to Ian's sister-in-law, Gillian, so the two have now become best buddies. He's a lot faster than Marley. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mac, Mac will get the ball before him, cos he's Mr Slow. <laughs> <laughs> they love each other. They love coming here and just chasing the ball, don't they? Nice to see Marley get on with other dogs and that. Marley, come here. This lovable chap, who was given up by his previous owner, is now at the heart of a big family. Lord of the manor now. His future's going to be great. It's going to be pretty going on long walks, spoiled rotten. Life of Marley, yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah. Good on you, Marley. You deserve it. Coming up. What's next for the four dogs rescued by Inspector Lindsay Taylor? Oh, I smell so much better. <laughs> At RSPCA Halifax, Lindsay and Sean are reviewing the case of the four dogs seized from the squalid house. With the occupant under investigation, 
detailed paperwork for each dog is vital. You've got the boarding records, yeah. weights, the welfare forms, the behaviour forms. Yeah, that's brilliant. Observation, so everything's in there. That's just what we need. A lot of what's in here is very important from my point of view um, because I'm an independent uh, expert. So from that point of view, how do I know that the dogs are any better in RSPCA care than they were in the house? The answer to that is obvious, um, but it's a question that I might get asked by a defence solicitor. Health-wise, how have they been? They've been good, but they've all had really chronic skin problems, which we've found is related to the food. Right. So we put them all on a hypoallergenic diet, they're much better on that. First up is 11-year-old Bruce. Hello. Hello. Hello, yeah. big guy. Let's just try and get that there. That is perfect. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, I smell so much better. <laughs> also less pongy are five-year-olds Beethoven. They just seem so much happier. And Susie. Hello, Susie. Hello. Hello. Yeah, you feel, um, just just the fur just feels so soft yeah. and nice to stroke. And that dog's confidence is still not 100% yet, but it's significantly better than it was. But what about six-year-old Magic, who had a seizure when she was rescued? Yeah, she's having a fit. Just keep your fingers away. There we go. When we took her out, I think it was just... Everything was just too much, right. and that spilled her over That's into awesome. a fit. Information overload, I think. Good girl. Have you had any we issues? We haven't had any repercussions of that. So it's looking positive for magic, too. Just happy just a lot more relaxed, aren't they? And confident yeah. as well. Well, just nothing to fear now, have they? That's no. it. See you later. See you later. Very pleased uh, with their progress. They're looking uh, physically and mentally much better than they were. It's good news for the dogs, but the case is far from over. While doing an investigation, you've got to stay really focused and determined, and you can't leave a single stone unturned, really. Right. It's really important that I find everyone that's involved and, and hold them accountable for their actions or lack of actions. Lindsay has discovered that Susie and Bruce's registered owner has even more dogs living at her address, which is a serious worry. I just want to get the rest of the animals out and into safety because I'm so concerned about their about their welfare and about their lives. As Lindsay considers these other animals to be at risk, she needs to get a warrant for the female owner's address. Hopefully we can get a warrant as soon as possible. And then we can go to this other address and get the animals out. Find out what Lindsay discovers next as the case continues. Hello and welcome to the second part of our Dog Rescuers special. This is Doris. Say hello, Doris. We'll see later how this little lady started life as a helpless tiny pup and had to be hand-reared. But first, Inspector Lindsay Taylor's investigation continues. This way, Doris. They're not coming in. Yeah. I'm telling you now, coming in. A week ago, in Lancashire, Lindsay Taylor rescued four dogs from squalid conditions. See who we've got in there. Don't come out, sweetie. Wow. <laughs> my eyes water. <laughs> oh. I think I need some fresh air. I'm probably quite close to being sick in there, then. Three of them were shut into separate rooms and living in their own waste. The floor is actually a good three to four inches of, of moulded dog faeces. The rooms that the dogs are in are absolutely shocking. And one was so traumatised, she had a seizure. Sure, sure. It's having a fit. But two of the dogs turned out not to belong at the address. 
Just the fact that she's allowed him to be in this environment is an, an offence. But why would the other owner allow her dogs to be kept in such terrible conditions? A week on, and Lindsay's investigation has uncovered that the two owners have been sharing dogs, and conditions in the second house are not expected to be much better. Any remaining animals have been deemed at risk, so the police have issued warrants for both properties. The information that I have, we're looking at at least six cats and at least four dogs that are still remaining at one, if not both, of the properties that we've got warrants for for today. Assisting Lindsay once again is vet Sean Taylor, who will be assessing the conditions and any dogs they might find. If you then certify, we'll get the animals into mine and girls' bands. Yeah. Um, and then we can then start looking for the evidence then. Yeah. OK. The police will be gaining access to the house for Lindsay and her team. They can use reasonable force if... To get in. Yeah, if we... If they won't let us in. But force isn't necessary today. The owner lets them in. So we just need to do a bit of a count what animals we're dealing with. And straight away, there is a familiar smell of ammonia. So we've got urine. Inside, the police are dealing with the owner. Well, I've not even heard me animals on love them. It's, you know, wait, you're, you're under arrest on suspicion at the moment. There's an investigation that needs it's to be done. Basically, isn't it? The link between the two owners is confirmed, and there appear to be more animals than expected here ten cats and six dogs. Most of the dogs have been confined to the kitchen. Hello? Hello? You all right? Hello? Hello, sweetie. Hello, you all right? Eh? Are you alright? Oh, I'm there, isn't it? I know. What are you living in? What are you living in? Okay. Eh? As well as the place being filthy, they don't have anything to drink. And there's, there's nothing in them, is there? They're both empty, I think. Yeah. Well, that, uh, that the ammonia in here is shocking, isn't it? Disturbingly, some of the dogs are licking urine from the floor. Have you got... Um, are you filming? Yeah. Okay. With no water, the dog's needs are not being met, an offence under the Animal Welfare Act. Their reaction to being given something to drink may prove to be important evidence. Oh, that's this. See you guys stay. Water is something that an animal should be provided with continuously, um, and there is a reason for that. There you go, pal. Mm -hmm. If we deprive a dog of water but we give it food, then it will die of dehydration very quickly. And by that, I mean within four or five days at the most. Do some more water? Are we thirsty? It saves you drinking urine off the floor, doesn't it? It's as easy as putting a bowl under a tap. It's a very, very simple procedure to do. Here we go. Just be able to that can have such devastating effects if it's not done on a regular basis. Have you been shut in there? Do you need a drink? Come on, then. Where's your door? I think sometimes it's just easier for the owner to shut the dog away in a crate, um, and that's, that's not how a crate should be used at all and a dog should not be living in there constantly just because it's convenient to the owner. So the dog's not been out of here for two days? No, that's what the police have just said that she said. Dogs being kept in crates, especially when they've no bedding in there, they've no water in there. It's just like a, putting them in a little, usually dirty prison. Lindsay needs to alert the kennels to make sure they have space for all the dogs. We've got four small medium dogs that are all loose together. Um, we've got a, a, a bull mastiff type that's created on his own, and we've also got a Yorkshire Terrier type that's created on its own. 
So um, I'm just going to ring around now and work out where they're going so we know who's van to put them in. And she also needs a break from the stench. So it's not, not pleasant breathing whilst you're in there. Um, so it's nice to get a bit of fresh air. Because it does knock you a bit sick when you're in there for a, any length of time. So yeah, get some fresh air and uh, get, get ready to get the dogs out. In Lancashire, Inspector Lindsay Taylor and her team are in the process of rescuing six very thirsty dogs from a property that reeks of animal urine. He's spitting feathers and it's not because he's eaten the budgie. He's not had any water for a long time. With the occupant under arrest, vet Sean Taylor gives his verdict on the conditions. I haven't seen any animals that have had access to water and the environment in here is just not acceptable. The first dog to be rescued is a young collie called Bess. Yeah, we've got a good girl. We're going to get you out. We're going to get you out. She's one of five dogs confined to the kitchen by a baby gate. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I just got more wee on there. You're covered in wee, aren't you? Right, we'll take these two out. Crawled out from under <gasps> the settee. Leaving with Bess is Chihuahua Cross Lulu, who looks rather elderly, and Bess looks very nervous. Body condition isn't too bad. Uh, this one's got a bit of a cough and a sneeze as well, and this one's got a bit of conjunctivitis in the eyes, and they're covered in urine. Sharing a kennel with her brother should help worried Bess. There we go, good girl, good girl. Go and get another two. <laughs> two and then four. Back inside, the dog that seems to be coughing the most is Staffy Angel. <laughs> She's being freed alongside another older dog, Terrier Cross Lassie. Oh, you're you scared. We're going to get you somewhere better. Glad to be out in the fresh air, but breathing in ammonia has taken its toll. Angel is still coughing. We see a, a, a number of dogs in that, those types of environments that, that, if you just sit and listen and observe, they're coughing on a regular basis, and they're doing that for a reason. That's because they're inhaling ammonia. Ammonia is a toxic uh, gas. Got skin conditions, very smelly, dirty coats, probably just due to the environment. I think this one's quite eager, isn't it? Yeah. So, four dogs down and two to go. Yorkie Rex has been freed from his filthy crate and he's raring to go. <laughs> We've got um, some dorsal alopecia, but there's no sign of any external parasites. But little Rex still looks pretty perky when he smells the outside world. There's some fur loss. Um, again, it'll be urine and faeces that's on the fur. And runny eyes and, and a cough as well. So you can see sneezing and coughing. The last to come out is also the biggest, two-year-old bull mastiff, Sasha. We're going to get you out now, sweetie. Eh? We are. We're going to get you out. Yes. They've had to pull the crate away from the wall to open its door. The owner has admitted that Sasha hasn't been let out of the crate for two days, so the poor thing's had to go to the toilet where she's been living and sleeping. I'll well, just take a picture of that shot. It's not got an aggressive bone in its body. That's it. Good girl. Hello. Hello, you all right? Oh, is that better to be out? Yes, but that went nice, were it? Like the other dogs, Sasha's coat doesn't look in the best condition. Good girl, good girl. Alopecia, yeah. Patchy. Yeah, there's a patch there, isn't there, as well? Yeah. 
So again, um, you know, a bit of conjunctivitis with her eyes um, and, and the coughing. But she's very friendly. She's a lovely dog. Like, yeah. Come on. Good girl. Once they've got Sasha aboard, they can start transporting all the dogs to kennels. The big difficulty that we've had uh, in the property is the ammonia. Atmospheric ammonia was pretty intense. The majority of the dogs that we've taken out of that property had conjunctivitis and, and watery eyes. And my main concern was that uh, none of the animals that were in there had access to, uh, to any drinking water. It's been a busy day for the team. But now it's over, at least the dogs will be able to breathe easy and spend the night somewhere clean and comfortable. Hello. 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 Is it you that's coughing? I'm just so relieved now. I could just carry you in, couldn't I? Eh? Give you smelly, smelly cuddles. Oh. Um, I'm so glad they're away from that property. Yeah, come on then. I know they're in a good, safe place now and they're going to get cared for as they should be, as they should have been already by the owners. Oh, actually, I might go first because I think this colleague's a bit nervous, isn't she? You follow your friend? We'll see how all the dogs are doing later. Well, a terrible way of life for those poor dogs, denied even the most basic of needs, like water and somewhere cosy to sleep. But thankfully, they're safe now. What happens if a vulnerable puppy loses its most vital support, its mum? You and your brother know all about that, don't you, Doris? What can you smell? It's not me. Rescuing dogs is one thing, but acting as mum to two helpless puppies is quite another as Inspector Charlotte Melvin has been discovering. She's been hand-rearing Dave and Doris, two pups from a litter that was found abandoned just under a fortnight ago in a West Midlands car park. Age-wise, we were guessing probably only a day old, maybe 48 hours maximum, but they all still had the umbilical cords attached. They were so helpless. Obviously, all squealing, looking for mum, um, very cold. Sadly, not all the puppies survived. These two were a lot brighter than the others. However, they all had very, very bright red paws, bright muzzle and uh, bright red where the stomach areas were. I've never come across that with puppies before and the vets first thought that it could possibly be carbon monoxide poisoning. The tiny pups were given oxygen, but only Dave and Doris were strong enough to pull through. Determined that these tiny and vulnerable pups should survive, Charlotte went above and beyond the call of duty and assumed the role of mum. This means feeding them approximately every two hours, um, always making sure that they've got hot water bottles or heat pads for keeping them warm um, because they can't regulate their own body temperature. And of course, Charlotte needs to keep on top of their dietary requirements too. It's puppy replacement milk. So it's been given to us by the vets um, and it's the like closest that you can get to mum's milk. At just 11 days old, the puppy's eyes aren't open yet. That should happen over the next week. But it won't be until they're eight weeks old that they can find a home of their own. Today, it's Doris and Dave's regular health check. With vet Claire Tucker. How are we getting on? Uh, really well. Good. How old are we now? Should be about a week and a half. About a week and a half. Hello. Can I come out? Right, so we're just going to give them a check over and check the weight. And yeah, check the weight. Right. Then... Hey, Dave. Oh. They've been feeding OK? Yeah, they've been feeding really yeah. well. So just checking the, the eyes. I say, although their eyes are closed, sometimes they can get built up infections and things behind there, so we need to make sure there's, there's no discharge. And we're looking in the mouth. Yes. When they're very young, we do have to check for cleft palates and things like that, but these have been examined and they're all fine, so that's good. Now it's time to find out if Charlotte's feeding regime is helping the pups put on weight. So he's 5'60 now. 
four days ago is 461 grams. 61 grams, grams. Yeah. yep. So we're 560 grams now, so he's put 100 grams on in the last four days. That's really good. perfect, so you're doing a good job. Hey. Okay. <laughs> right then, Doris, it's your turn. You're a live wire, you, aren't you? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we see how much you weigh then? If she was... 510. 510. So 510 grams. What are we today? So we've gone up to 560. So that's 50 grams in the last four days. Yes. Yeah. So that's good. Really good. Doing a good job. Wonderful. Right. Charlotte's been a great surrogate mum, and she'll need to bottle feed the pups for a couple more weeks before they can be weaned onto solid food. Bearing in mind that they were sort of abandoned from a very, very early age where they're 100% reliant on mum, um, they're really thriving and doing very well. Right. OK. <laughs> All right, then. All right. Um, so when shall we come back, then? So, for me, come back Monday? Yeah, that's yeah. fine. OK, All see right. you later. Thank see you. you. Bye. Bye. It's been quite stressful. Um, it's a lot of hard work. But other than that, over the moon that um, they're doing so well it means that, obviously, I'm doing everything right. That's the main thing. <laughs> We'll catch up with a slightly bigger Dave and Doris soon. It's been 24 hours since vet Sean Taylor helped rescue six very thirsty dogs from a urine-soaked property. He's at Kennels in Burnley to examine them in more detail. His notes on the condition of the dogs are vital in building a strong case. Vet nurse Melissa is helping out. And first for a checkup is 10 year old Chihuahua cross Lulu, who was found lying on a urine covered floor. Hair loss on the hocks. Yeah, a little bit there. It's got well. a hair loss here. Yeah, he's got that turn down both sides of those legs in there. The urine is not neutral. Well, more often than not, it should be acidic. It contacts the skin and causes inflammation of the skin. And when the hair follicles become inflamed, they shed the hair. The urine then effectively scalds the skin. It, it, it's, it's like a chemical burn in effect. The conditions in the house have had a similar effect on lively six-year-old Staffy Angel. <laughs> yes, come here, monkey. Let me pop you up with right. There you go. No, this, your skin's not too good, is it? So you can see on, on this dog what we've actually got from a urine skull point of view. It tends to be focused around the hocks and the feet. You see this a lot more on this dog with it being white. You see the pink areas in, in between the feet. Top, oh my God. Oh, that's it, are you? It's me again, isn't it? 12 year old Terrier Cross Lassie has other issues besides the urine burns. She's got mild cataracts in those eyes. Um, and again, overall, the environment's had an influence on uh, certain aspects, mainly the skin. Eight-month-old Collie Bess had a sticky coat from the urine, and she's still extremely nervous. Come on, stop. I thought you might Come be coming on. down with that Collie. Was uh, she Come giving on. you a bit of trouble because she's scared? Eh? Come on. Shall we have a look at you? Come on, then. I'm so petrified. She is scared, isn't she? When we were in there looking at, at the dogs, uh, she was being um, bullied by the others. Um, and to some degree, that's her just being it's a, a submissive um, nature. And that's how she's behaving, of course, when she's in front of us as well. Also, a little on the worried side is two-year-old bull mastiff Sasha, yeah, that's it. who was found confined to a crate. Hello. Hello, you. How are you doing? Eh? Since she came into kennels last night, she has had um, uh, one or two episodes of vomiting as well. Right on cue. Mm. Shall we? See, that was more of a that's cough mucus. that's brought that yeah, up, wasn't that. it, really? That's kind of mucus in it. Yeah. Easy. Oh, dear. We've got that biscuit stuck. It was quite thick, that. Yeah, it is, isn't it, yeah. You'll get that really through acid production, so the fact that she's probably not eaten for a while and then she's taken quite a lot of food and water in all at once. Sasha will need to be closely monitored. Come on. Last in is tiny Yorkie Rex, who was also freed from a crate. One extreme to the other, isn't it? Eh? 
Yeah, it is. Oh, big kisses. Oh, big kisses. Oh. Again, you've got one or two skin issues here. You can see just on here, inflammation <laughs> just on the bony areas. And he's got some hair loss as well. The uh, six dogs that were removed from the property yesterday, um, we've got uh, urine scald, which is consistent in, in all six. We've got conjunctivitis, uh, and we've also got respiratory tract irritations. Oh, another day at the office, eh? And now we've removed them from that environment, we start to see if they, see, they improve. Each dog will be vaccinated and treated for worms and fleas, as well as having a much needed bath. We'll catch up on their recovery later. Come on. Also coming up, what a difference a few weeks makes. See how Doris and Dave have grown. I mean, they're only eight weeks old uh, and a lot bigger than anyone was ever expecting. And will specialist therapy go swimmingly for nervous rescue Collie Bess? And she is getting used to it, aren't you? Walkies, come on, come on, Bess. Seven weeks ago, Inspector Lindsay Taylor and Vet Sean rescued six dehydrated dogs from a urine-soaked house. Today, they've come to RSPCA Preston to check on their condition. The dogs have all been recovering from bad skin and runny eyes caused by exposure to ammonia. Lindsay and Sean are recording the dog's progress to build the case against their owner, who has agreed to sign four of them over, including lively little Rex the Yorkie. Hello. Oh, oh, you do look much better, don't you? Oh, you happy, aren't you? Oh, and his fur is much better. I think he was virtually mauled back there, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you're looking well, aren't you? Also signed over, and equally perky, is Staffy Angel. Good girl. Want your treats? I've not got your treats. Oh, she's, that's a bit mean. There we go. Good girl. Oh, you like your tummy rubbing? The two older dogs, Chihuahua Cross Lulu. Hello. Hey. <laughs> it's very chilled anyway, isn't it? Yeah, and Terrier Cross Lassie will be going to a branch that specialises in rehoming senior citizens. Oh, does that feel better? Does that feel better now? Mm. Oh, you're a nice sweet dog. Mm. Yes, you are. Hello. Hiya. Hello. What are you up to? There's good news about Mastiff Sasha, who was confined to a small crate. She's had no further bouts of vomiting and is in good spirits. Oh, and a nice That's soft, it. clean coat as well again. Brilliant. Thank you. You're a softie, aren't you? A very big softie. Aren't you? Yes. Good girl. Also looking much better after a good bath is nervous collie Bess. Hello. Hello. Have I had to come to you? Hey. See, it's all right. Hey. She's like, I can't look at you. Mm -hmm. Oh, good girl. Well, you feel cleaner already. That feels much better. The yeah, major problem with um, with this batch of dogs was that the, the environment wasn't particularly full of faeces, but it was full of urine, so they all had urine scald on their feet. The majority of them were coughing as well, so take them away from that environment, you get an instant improvement. Both Bess and Sasha haven't been signed over. In the past weeks, Lindsay has interviewed both the owners that were sharing the dogs. Well, one of them has said that maybe there were too many animals, which is why I've got some signed over. Um, but um, they think that they haven't done anything wrong and they would like some of the animals back. I wouldn't want any of these animals to go back to either one of these properties. Neither one was suitable um, and neither person was caring for them as they should be doing. Um, I don't want them to have any animal ever again. See you later, thank you. We'll let you know how the case unfolds later. But now we're checking in on another dedicated inspector and her young brood. Just two months ago, Inspector Charlotte Melvin rescued abandoned day-old pups Doris and Dave and took on the challenge of hand-rearing them. She's done a great job as the puppies are thriving and they're now eight weeks old.
and they haven't just had turkeys and chickens to get used to. Charlotte's five dogs have really helped with Doris and Dave's development. Little things like following them outside and going out for a wee, uh, they've learned that. I'd say that they've probably picked up that off the other dogs. If they have been getting a little bit too rough with each other and things like that, the other dogs have told them, which would normally be role of mum. You go in. Come on, you go. There's no more bottle feeding for surrogate mum Charlotte because now Dave and Doris are on the solids. But the breed of these two growing babies is still somewhat a mystery. We thought that they were maybe Staffy Cross Collie or something like that. The size that they've grown now, I think we've definitely got something a lot bigger in there. I mean, they're only eight weeks old uh, and a lot bigger than anyone was ever expecting. <laughs> now they're old enough, Doris and Dave will soon be leaving Charlotte to go to new homes. If we didn't have five dogs, then they would definitely, definitely be staying, but I think I might end up single if I end up with another two dogs. <laughs> it will come as no surprise that cuties Doris and Dave have had a lot of interest, and for both of them, the process of adoption is underway. And just 48 hours later, it's little Dave's big day. He's going to his new home. I think he might miss Doris. Maybe miss me a little bit, but it's an exciting and it's a happy day for him. It's me that it's a little bit of a sad day for. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm really happy for him and happy that he's, he's got this far and he's now going on to a new life. Yeah. It'll be OK, Dave. Your new owners have another dog that you can make friends with. That'll be them now. Hi, are you right? Yeah, thank you. There he is. Do you know your mum and dad? Hello, mate. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. He has grown okay. since I saw him as well. I know. <laughs> Growing every day, aren't you? Dave's new owners are Jess and uh, Dave. It's going to be fun. Here you go. Who's having him? Oh. You're having him. Oh, you do. Is your new dad? And you've got the same name as well? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's going to get so confusing. Just helping a brother out, aren't we? <laughs> we weren't particularly looking for another puppy as such, um, but reading the story and seeing it, his name was Dave, um, <laughs> couldn't not have him, really. for another one, haven't Yeah, we, exactly. Definitely. Exactly. He says, like, how happy I am. <laughs> He'll settle quite so, quick, I think. Will he settle quite quick? Yeah, I was going to say, I would have thought so. I think he'll be all right. It'll be nice to get him, hopefully get him together maybe in like when they're like six yeah, months definitely. or something and see you. Definitely, it'll be wicked. Get him back together recognize and see if they recognise each other yeah. and oh, see that. what they've grown into and everything. Yeah, isn't definitely. It? It's time for Charlotte to say goodbye to little Dave. Have one last cuddle. Yeah. Come on. Oh. You're going to be a really good boy. But yeah, no, so no doing anything naughty. Cabelli. Oh, he's looking at you already. That's where you're going home with. Yeah, I'm going right. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. It's okay. See you later. See you later. See you later. Bye. See you later, Dave. Bye. Be a good boy. I think she needs the dog. And then there was one. <laughs> so we've got little Doris left now. She might miss him a little bit, um, but we'll keep an eye on her. I'm sure she'll be fine, won't you? Will you? We'll be fine. And it won't be long before Doris is off to her forever home too. After a really tough start, the pups are doing brilliantly and Charlotte can now get some much needed rest. I'm really glad that I did it. Um, it's been a big experience for me. So yeah, really proud. Proud of what they've turned into. And I'd do it again as well, definitely. So, Dave got a new home, but how about Doris? Well, it didn't take long for her to be snapped up either. And I'm meeting her new owners, Ellie and Tom. So how's Doris settling in? Really well, isn't she? Very well, yeah. Yeah, she's friends with our Staffordshire Ball. Got another dog already? Yeah. We've got two kids as well, so she's... Have you? What yeah. age are they? Um, five and 15 months. Oh, so, so she's really, really for. good. Yeah. How old is Doris? She's five months. Oh, 
Oh, right, so she's a baby of the bunch, then. Baby, yeah. <laughs> what does she get up to around the house? Have you got any odd little habits? Takes your socks. The baby's socks. The baby socks. And the baby's toys. Baby's toys. Yeah. Favourite. Oh, right. So proper rivalry going yeah. on there. Sister yeah. rivalry. <laughs> <laughs> What about her brother? Have you had any contact with the brother? The inspector that found her took Doris to meet up with her brother, so she saw him about a month ago. Oh, did, and did yeah. they yeah, recognise each other together, and yeah. have a good play? They did. Have you got time to do any training with her, or are you too we... busy training the children? Yeah. <laughs> Doris, can you do anything? Doris, sit. <gasps> oh, good girl. Doris. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Good girl. Other paw? Other paw? Good girl. Yeah. So you'd recommend a rescue dog then? 100%. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Do you hear that? You've made a big impression, there. Doris. <laughs> She's good, isn't she? She's lovely. Have a good time with Doris. She <laughs> seems fantastic. <laughs> Great to see Doris is doing well. But now it's time to catch up with one of the dogs freed from that squalid house who's had an unexpected diagnosis. Four months after her rescue, Collie Bess is still at RSPCA Preston. Good girl, good girl, Bess. Where animal care assistant Kate Reynolds is helping with her recovery. And x-rays have shown that her cowering walk was not entirely due to nerves. Come on, Bess, what's this? Good girl. Um, she's got a hip dysplasia, which is when the ball doesn't fit into the socket. Um, it can be quite uncomfortable and painful for her and eventually she'll probably need surgery. But we've got this um, band on her leg to support her while she's walking. Bess's condition could be due to a number of factors, including diet and genetics. Providing specialist care are physio Donna and hydrotherapist Charlotte. So, Bess, are we in playful mood today? Hi, dude. <laughs> How are you? Are you ready? To help Bess with her balance, they've been using a wobble cushion. So, ready? Oh, smash What a clever girl. So this is tons better than last time. Mm. Standing, there's no dipping at the back from yeah. the back legs at all. And we've got good placement there. Looks like that exercise regime is starting to pay off. Can Bess come back? Mm. Oh, it's a clever girl. So we're going to try and see. You're going to do a big step over. Can you do big step overs? Oh, oh good super girl. girl. Now, in this position, we can now see where she wants to weight bear. And at the moment, or to start with, she was on a good leg. Yeah. But because the treat was over this side, she then sort of leant more onto the bad leg as well. And there was no slipping in that pelvis right. that you could see, because obviously the first time she came, that leg dipped. So she's doing better than when, when we, yeah. we first attended from there. It's good news, but tiring stuff for Bess, who's also been having hydrotherapy walking on a treadmill in a tank of warm water. Oh, the water creates resistance and that's going to help build the muscle mass up and increase the range of motion within that joint. Today is her fourth session. So we need the water quite high with Bess just to offer that additional support within the water and make that a little bit more comfortable. And she is getting used to it, aren't you? Boogies, come on. Come on, Bess. Come on, Bess. Come on, Bess. We're all rooting for you. Come on, Bess. Let's go here. Walk on. <laughs> Come on, good girl. Good girl. Well what done. Girl. Hydrotherapy can relieve pain and inflammation, build muscle strength and tone without impact, and allow the body to return to a more natural movement pattern. <gasps> what a clever oh, girl. Good girl, good girl, good girl, good girl, good girl. Good girl, come on, come on, good girl. So today is a really good positive because we've done a total of two and a half minutes over staggered sets. So very, very pleased with the progress. And I think we can definitely continue to build that muscle mass up alongside physiotherapy. Haven't you done such a good job? Really good job, Bess. Mm -hmm. Well done. Bess will continue her therapy for a few more months. What a clever mm. girl. But as she hasn't yet been signed over, for now, a new home will have to wait. Coming up, life is sweet for Sasha the Bull Mastiff, who was confined to a crate. She's absolutely adorable, and she's just part of the family. What a 
are you living in? What are you living in? Okay. Eh? Earlier, Sasha the Bull Mastiff was suffering from the effects of living in an undersized crate in a filthy kitchen. You know, a bit of conjunctivitis with her eyes um, and, and a coffin. But she's very friendly. She's a lovely dog. Like, yeah. But nine months on, thanks to Inspector Lindsay Taylor, her life has taken a definite turn for the better. She's found a new home with Kerry and Mark Adams, who fell in love with her at the animal centre. <laughs> she was just a curious, dead friendly, and I said to my husband, I said, yeah, she's definitely the one. Well, she just looks a nice dog, doesn't she? I don't know, I suppose it was her face just appealed to me. She's been given a sweet new name, Oreo, and she's gained a big sister in seven-year-old Cookie, a Labrador cross. Bit of a theme here. They get on really well. They play, they snuggle up together at night time. They, um, they're just funny. They're just a funny pair of comedians, aren't you? And like typical biscuits, I mean, sisters. Thank you. Whatever one of them has. Oh, here we go. Here comes Bruiser. The other one wants. <laughs> no, I'm going to have no sock left. <laughs> Even when it's just a sock. That's it, wrong way. It is only a sock, you two. Well, I'll save a fortune on toys. The poor pooch that was left in a small crate for days. We're going to get you out now, sweetie. Eh? We are. We're going to get you out. Now loves to explore the great outdoors with Mum and Big Sis. I know. Excited. <laughs> They're often joined by Kerry's daughter, Kirsty, and her two dogs. Hello. Hello. Three-year-old Theo and puppy Lexi. At first she didn't know what walking was. Um, I don't think she'd been ever used to a collar or anything, so as soon as I go to get my walking boots on or my shoes and she knows it's walking time, that's it, she's off. She absolutely loves um, long grass. So Oreo has this big thing about whenever there's long grass, she will run through, won't she? She'll yeah. run through really fast. It's like a cartoon dog, isn't she? The way her chops go at the yeah. same time as she's running. And it seems larger than life Oreos really bonded with little Lexi. Can't separate them. Wherever one is, the other one's normally within yeah. seconds of them. Oreo throws a round butt. Lexi absolutely loves it. And I think because Oreo's still a puppy, they've got someone that they can be that stupid with that neither of them run out of energy. <laughs> this lively girl has found the loving home she deserves at last. <laughs> what are you doing? She's absolutely adorable. And she's just part of the family. Every day, she just does something that just tickles me because she's just so funny. She's just changed our life for the better, definitely. Bless her. Life couldn't be sweeter for Oreo. In the end, Oreo's owner did sign over all her dogs. Bess, Lulu, Lassie, Rex and Angel. Along with Susie, and Bruce, the two dogs that were living at the other filthy property. She pleaded guilty to failing to meet their needs and to two counts of causing unnecessary suffering. She was sentenced to six weeks imprisonment, suspended for 12 months, and given a lifetime ban on keeping any animals. The owner from the first property was made subject to a community order for 10 months and banned from keeping dogs or cats for five years. The court heard that there were serious and significant concerns about his ability to look after himself. A deprivation order was issued to remove his two dogs, Beethoven and Magic, from his possession. It's very rewarding when you get a good result at the end. You put a lot of work into it, you make sure everything's done properly. And when the courts give the sentence of making sure that them dogs aren't going to go back to that person or that they're not going to be able to get dogs in the future, that, that's why we do it. 
Thanks to Lindsay, those dogs have gone on to find forever homes, including Beth, who is recovering well and has found her perfect match, Kim Graham.